So here's a slightly more complicated example where I have heights and I'm going to compare them between uh, male and female gender. Now I have some values which are missing values, so NA is in there, uh, that I need to ignore. And otherwise I'm just going to use two categories again. This is why I've not used a broader definition of gender in this case, because I need to have two categories to do the t-test. If I have more than two categories, which we'll see in a minute, I need to do an over. Now let's have a look at this data before I get myself in a pickle like last time. Okay, so it hasn't got any value labels. It genuinely says female and male. It doesn't even say F and M. <sighs> no, nope, I've got no values defined. It's male and female. Okay, so let's go to analyze and compare means. I don't want description statistics. So again, this is an independent sample because male and female are separate to one another. The test variable is height. Grouping variable is gender, and I have to define the groups. As I said, depending on which way around you put female and male depends on whether you get a negative difference or a positive difference. Continue. And oh, let's flick off estimate the effect size because I don't really want to do that. And press OK. Mm -hmm. What? OK. I don't know why it did that. Right, so let's have a look. There are 72 women, 34 men. That's a very different group size to each other. The standard deviations are not particularly different to each other. And you can see that with the equal variances assumed. But because of the difference in the size of the two different groups, it's still better to use Welch's version. So you've got 54.6 degrees of freedom. Your p-value is less than 0.001. If I double click on that, it might show me to a few more decimal places. If I go to this one and click on it, yeah, it's 6.06 .06 times 10 to the minus what? Let's go across. Can I see any more? Oh, it's not showing me the rest of the digits. Anyway, it's a very small number. So the two tail test is defines your hypothesis. You choose whether your hypothesis is one or two tail when you define your test you're going to carry out. You can't get to this point and find that it's not significant in a two-tailed test, but would be significant in a one-tailed test. So you're going to change which test you do. You have to come to a statistical test with clean hands, because otherwise you're committing the error of this lies, damn lies and statistics. So in this case, because we're assuming that men are, well, we're assuming there's a difference in height if we're doing a two-sided hypothesis. If we did a one-sided hypothesis, we're assuming that men are shorter than women. Either of them are valid, but you need to do it, the picking before you actually get to collecting the data. So on average, the difference is minus 0.16 uh, to minus 0.94 in difference. So it's between 9 and 16 centimeters. Difference between male and female heights. And it's highly significant in this particular class. Doesn't mean necessarily it's always significant. And with different groups, you might get different behaviors. So I know somebody who's uh, six foot five and um, he was talking about apparently in Holland women like sh uh, men to be shorter than them and he's considered a short man but he would be considered tall in the UK and very tall in Spain the Dutch are the tallest uh, people in Europe <laughs> 